The latest update to the Power BI desktop app included a new visual called Outlier Detection. So what I wanted to do in this video was take you through two of the options that you have inside that new visual to detect outliers. So inside Power BI, what I've loaded in here is some home market value data, very basic, very simple information that just contains the ID of the record, a house ID, the age of the home, the market value, and its square footage. I've also done a z-score calculation that I'm going to talk about as we start building the app. So the first thing I want to do is uh, bring in a table here and uh, put in the home ID, put in the age of the house, the market value, and uh, the square footage. And uh, I'm just going to change all of these to not summarize take away the counts and just display each of the values that's here on the table. So this is the basic uh, set of data that we have. And what I really want to try and determine here, are there any homes whose value is much higher or much lower than what the square footage indicates it should be? So uh, this visual is a really good way of doing that. Uh, to get the visual, you're going to want to hit the three dots here, the ellipsis, go out to import from marketplace. And I'm just going to type in outlier here and find uh, outliers detection. It's this visual here and uh, add that to your Power BI environment. When you do that, it's going to install some R packages because it's a R visual. So that may take a few moments for those visuals to install. You'll be prompted and you'll have to accept the installation of those packages as part of the visual being loaded. So we've got the table built. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll put the visual onto the canvas here. I'm just going to expand it a little bit. And what we're going to bring in is the, the house ID. We're going to drop that into the ID field here, and we're going to tell that not to summarize. Uh, and then we're going to take the home market value as our variable and do the same thing, not summarize that. And then drop in the square footage as the independent variable and we don't want that to be summarized. And then I'm going to take the house age and make that a uh, tooltip over here and not summarize that either. So as I hover over any data point here on the scatter plot, I can see the market value, the square footage, the home's age. All right, so for the actual outlier detection piece of this, if we go over to the format tab here on the visual we can hit the drop down here for detection. And uh, Z-score is chosen by default and it's at four sigmas. And I'm gonna briefly go over to another tab here in my report and talk a little bit about what the Z-score is and how these, how these outliers are detected. If you've never worked with Z-scores before, never done anything with uh, standard deviations, this will give you a good idea of how it works. So uh, we're sort of assuming that the data here is in a standard normal distribution. That's part of the assumption we're going to make uh, with this data set. In the z-score calculation, then, when we're choosing the sigmas, what we're really saying is how many standard deviations away is the data from the mean. And this visual gives you a good idea of what that looks like. So right now, that value is defaulting to 4. Typically, at least when I've done outlier detection, I usually set the value to three. So we're looking for we're looking for any values that fall outside of plus or minus three standard deviations. So way out here on each side of the tail is really what we're looking for. If you really want to get hardcore technical about the way that the z-score is calculated, it's a very simple calculation. In fact, I've done it inside Power BI. So I'll go back and show you what that looks like, but. At a very basic level, you're just taking the value of the current record minus the uh, mean of the data overall, and that is um, on over the standard deviation of that data set. So let's go back to the outliers detections here, and I'm going to drop in the z-score over on that table, and you'll see it populate there. And I'm going to click on it, and in the formula bar you can see how I've done the z-score, so I'm taking the market value. Uh, minus the average of the market value for the entire data set, and then dividing that by the standard deviation of the data set. <clears throat> okay, and that gives me the z-score here. Going back to the format tab 
and uh, of, of that particular visual and looking at the detection piece, you'll notice that for standard deviations, there are no values that are four standard deviations away. In fact, there aren't any that are even three away. And this highlights a really good example of the fact that there really isn't a universally accepted way to find outliers. So my my standard, my go-to way of doing it is to choose three sigmas and then and use the z-score. But even that doesn't show what I would consider an outlier, which is this value up here, where the square footage is actually uh, quite small, 1500 and, uh, 1581 square feet, and it's a $120,000 home. It, certainly, compared to the rest of the data visually, it looks like an outlier, and there may be some other values in here that you might consider an, an outlier, but the z-score doesn't, doesn't think so. I can change it to 2.5, let it rerun, and see if it flags any of them, and it does eventually uh, flag this one actually as 2.7. So let's try it a different way. So we showed the z-score, we do it via standard deviation. Let's go back and change one of the, the algorithm dropdown to detection to be uh, Tucky's method. And Tucky's method uses the interquartile range rather than the standard deviation uh, or um, the, the sigma level. So let's go back out and look at um, interquartile range here. And all I've done is used a pretty standard box and whisker plot, but I've just turned it... Uh, horizontal rather than vertical. These are sometimes called five five value plots or, or five value graphs. So it's horizontal rather than vertical. If I hover over a, any point inside this uh, chart, you'll see that it gives me the first and third quartile. So the first quartile is 86,400 and the third quart quartile is 96,700. That gives me an interquartile range of 10,300. So to get that, I just take the third quartile minus the first quartile, and that gives me the range of the data. What Tucky's method is going to do then is it's going to allow you to choose a factor that you're going to multiply the interquartile range by and then add that to the, to the third quartile range or subtract it from the first quartile range to give you the area where the outliers exist. If that doesn't make any sense, I'm going to go back over to the chart and you'll see exactly what I mean. Okay, so this is a scatter plot right now and the detection method is Tucky's method, but we're going to go to the visualization piece here and change it from a scatter plot to a box plot. We'll let the visual reload, and then when it comes up, this is uh, vertical rather than horizontal, but you can see if I hover over pieces of the chart here, I get the same uh, quartile range, of course I should, uh, where the first quartile ends at 86,400 and the third is at 96,700, so that's a difference of 10,300. Any value then that if I go to the de detection piece, and right now I have selected three as the factor, any value that is 10,300 times three, so we're looking at $30,900, more than the third quartile range is considered an outlier. Okay, so in this case, uh, those values, I'm going to change it down to 1.5 because that's usually the typical uh, value that's selected when this is this is run. You'll see that these values here, uh, the the value I'm looking for at 1.5 would be $15,450 plus the $96,700, which would put me at about $112,450. So any these ones all make sense that they're plotting uh, in the red and they show up in the red. If I go back and I change my interquartile range again, back to three, and I let the, uh, the visual rerun. Now you'll see that they are not red anymore. And that's because three, three times the uh, difference in the, in the interquartile range uh, plus the, the third quartile range ending would put me way beyond 120,700. So none of those values would be considered outliers at that point. So the main factor to think about here is uh, what you would consider changing the, the factor by 1.5 times the interquartile range to 3 times the interquartile range. For me, and what I've used, the standard is to start at 1.5, and then you'll, you'll see that these, these values here 
are outside of the range, and I can change my plot back to a scatter plot, and we can get a little bit better sense of where those fall. Visually, this one is still considered an outlier, which makes sense to me, and then uh, these three here are considered outliers using those two methods. Now, there are two other methods here that I'm not going to cover in this video, uh, the the local outlier factor and uh, Cook's distance, which are which are methods used for a little bit different data set that I'm going to show you in another video, uh, and it'll at that time it'll make sense. But I'm going to leave it there using those two methods, and we'll touch back up on the other ones here in a future video. Please drop a like, ask questions, comments, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for listening.